السلام علیکم خواتین و حضرات وسیم احسن ویلکمس یو ٹو لیکچر نمبر تھرٹی فائیو آف برانڈ مینجمنٹ ایم کے ٹی سکس ٹو فور ایٹ دا ورچوئل یونیورسٹی آف پاکستان دا ٹاپک آف ٹو ڈیگ از سیلس پروموشنس اینڈ یو ول ری کال دیٹ سیلس پروموشنس از دا سیکنڈ دا موسٹ امپارٹنٹ اینڈ ڈومیننٹ دا پارٹ آف کمیونیکیشن دا میننگ ون آف دا ٹولس آف کمیونیکیشن We already have talked about uh, advertising and uh, I started talking about sales promotion in the last lecture when the lecture came to an end. So uh, let us uh, pick up the threads from where I left. Advertising uh, plays a very visible role in creating awareness and comprehension. This is what we learned from the previous lectures. Knowing that advertising has done its part by creating the first two phases of uh, the customer's response effects, the meaning awareness and comprehension, we still need the support of sales promotions in order to create the final action. So in other words, advertising they may be limited in creating the desired action that we have to see on part of our consumers, the meaning they should go to the market and buy our brand. It is at that point that the significance of sales promotion comes in. Knowing that advertising has created the pull to that awareness and comprehension, we now have to create the push for the customer to go to the market and buy the brand. So in other words, It is at this point that we like to create what you all know is trial. Through sales promotions, we try to create trial, especially for those products which are new. Because after having tried the product, the customer is in a much better position to know the actual benefits which the product carries. And that is the true test of a product. So sales promotions, they become very important, coupled with advertising at this juncture. In other words, the pull and push, and they have to come together in order to create the desired result, which is the action for a sale. To create that push, What we have to keep in our minds is that uh, the involvement of uh, the intermediaries is of utmost importance. Unless we involve intermediaries, meaning the various members of the channel, there is no way that we are going to achieve the end result. According to the one estimate, one third of uh, the communication budgets is spent on advertising and two-third on promotions. This has become uh, the very important uh, area of uh, the debate all over the world, uh, in Western markets in particular, to what extent a company should um, spend on with promotions and to what extent a company should spend on advertising. What is happening generally is what I've told you, the one-third on advertising and two-third on promotions. Because the general feeling is that advertising is expensive, but you have to pay it outright to the various media. Whereas in terms of promotions, you do not really have to pay it immediately. At least that's the way it looks like. When you carry out promotions, you carry those out with the help of the product which you already have manufactured. And you start giving extra quantities, you get into the sampling, you start giving the gifts and so on and so forth. So at least on the face of it, it looks like that promotions are not, are not as expensive as advertising is. But the fact remains that generally companies end up spending something like two-thirds of the total communication budgets on promotions. And out of the two-thirds of the budget spent on um, the promotions, 
One third or a little more than that is uh, get spent on uh, intermediaries, the meaning the members of the channel, and uh, about two thirds on uh, customers, or for that matter, consumers. Why is it that uh, the companies really have to spend the one third on uh, the intermediaries? Uh, the while it looks like they should be spending all the money on uh, the final consumers. Well, the reason is that uh, the intermediaries uh, are uh, very well aware of the role they play in the market and uh, the power they carry. You will recall from uh, the channels, the systems that uh, the every member of the channel is uh, the playing uh, an important function. And uh, without that function, the supply chain uh, does not get completed. And uh, it is very difficult for the one company to start undertaking all the functions of the supply chain. And therefore, the role of the intermediaries that takes on importance. The remaining part which is spent on the final consumers is spent basically on incentives and inducements which are offered to them in order to create a trial. And this really helps, especially in the case of new products, like I pointed out earlier, which are not yet tested in the marketplace. And no matter what amount of advertising has gone into it, to generate a very decent level of awareness and comprehension, the final action may not be taken by the consumers because there always is the kind of a hesitation on the part of all of us to try something new, especially when we are satisfied with the products that we are using, the meaning the brands that we already are using. So it is with the help of the intermediaries retailers in particular that we offer so many different incentives and the total mechanism around which execution of such the incentive schemes revolves is retailers driven in most of the cases. This is not to say that the distributors are not involved. They also are involved but um, the, the final role uh, in terms of uh, the execution of uh, uh, the promotions uh, is played generally uh, at the retailer's end. So uh, the retailers from that point of view uh, take on an added significance. We can say that uh, just like in the case of advertising, we have, uh, rather we should have uh, a mixed bag of different tools. The same is the case for promotions that we should be having a kind of a promo mix in order to create an effective promotional scheme or a promotional campaign. Let us now talk about two different kinds of promotions that we have to carry at the same time. And you know I'm referring to the trade promotions and consumer promotions. Trade promotions, very obviously, I already have told you, are important because of the importance of uh, the intermediaries. It goes without saying that uh, when we are in the midst of um, a campaign, that we have to make sure that uh, the retailers are carrying adequate level of stocks of the brand which is to be promoted or which is being promoted. Retailers not only have to carry usual the levels of stocks they have to carry a little more and not only that you have to convince retailers into giving you the space which is prime in their stores and not only prime space you need more space because you need to have a tremendous display of the brand which is being promoted so that it does not escape attention of any potential consumer walking into the store this is where the role of uh, retailers comes in. If retailers are reviewing the, your campaign very positively, they certainly are going to provide you with uh, the prime space and uh, the more space in order for your brand to be very visible within their stores. And uh, I must say that this is the prime objective which you must try to achieve. 
And this is where uh, the role of uh, your sales staff also comes in. Whenever you are carrying out these kinds of uh, the campaigns, you must take into uh, the importance of your sales staff. So in other words, that is a very important touch point. And uh, without the input of the salespeople, I would say that you should not be uh, finalizing any promotional campaign. Salespeople are the ones uh, who are in contact with uh, not only your uh, the final consumers, but also with the trade members the meaning distributors and retailers in particular. And uh, they, therefore, are the ones who develop the sales forecasts. And they are the ones who give you insights into the buying patterns and uh, the buying criteria on part of the final consumers. So they are aware of not only that, they're also aware of uh, the buying patterns of um, the intermediaries. So in other words, if you are to carry out certain campaigns which are directed toward uh, the trade members, it just cannot be effective unless your sales staff uh, are involved into it. And do not forget that, uh, that these are the people who also play the role of uh, CRM, Customer Relationship Management. They are not only into sales, they are also into relationship marketing and hence relationship management. You have to the, take their the view into consideration just like the way the, you took that into consideration the while you were developing the brand picture, the while you were assessing the, the buying criteria, the why customers could buy one brand in preference to the other. And the inputs at that stage the were taken into serious consideration given by the salespeople. So their importance can be hardly overemphasized. Let us now talk about uh, the, the other dimension of uh, the promotions, which is uh, consumer promotions. There are so many different tools which you are going to have at your disposal while um, the putting together a mixed bag of uh, the promotions. And, uh, the tools which are generally used by the brand managers are uh, like um, price reductions, the multi-buy and uh, uh, the multi-save, additional uh, the quantity and pack, the manufacturers, price reduction, coupons, the rewards and gifts, free items in the form of uh, the free sampling, and so on and so forth. Now, let us uh, try to uh, take a look at all these uh, one by one, just to see the nature of which uh, they all have. The, the basic objective of uh, giving these incentives is to uh, generate a higher level of trial because we know that uh, the awareness is there and comprehension also is there. So uh, we have to generate the final action. And uh, nothing uh, could serve better of a purpose than the fact that uh, we offer something extra or something free uh, only to have your uh, customers try the product. And uh, the, like it is said, in terms of uh, the most of the FMCGs, uh, and in particular the food items, nothing works as well as uh, the free items, or for that matter, sampling. Because once you have tasted a product uh, or used a product, uh, you are in a good position to decide whether it uh, is worth buying or not. And uh, whenever you carry out campaigns, you are convinced that uh, your product or your brand is worth buying. And uh, that is how you try to convince customers that uh, they should switch to uh, your brand. Let us uh, talk about these uh, the inducements uh, the one by one. Uh, I talked about uh, the multi-buy and multi-save. This is uh, a general practice on uh, the part of so many different companies to offer things like uh, the buy six and uh, the get so many free. The buy two, get one free. Or maybe, you know, buy one, and get one free. Depending upon the objectives that you have in relation to the promotional campaign, you come up with uh, the level and intensity of the campaign. The other tool uh, that I talked about was uh, additional quantity impacts. This is uh, also something which is uh, not really 
strange to you uh, that you see so many different products with uh, the 10% extra content or uh, you know 20% extra content. So whatever extra is given is an inducement for the customer or for the potential customer to buy that product and to use it and then get convinced that uh, the promise it carries is deliverable. The other tool uh, which you have uh, at uh, your uh, disposal is uh, the manufacturer's price reduction. Now, this is uh, something which uh, you should avoid, I would say, because uh, this has a lot of the built-in inherent kind of complications. Your uh, brand uh, is subjected to uh, the low price uh, for all times to come in most of the cases, and uh, therefore you should try to avoid that. But this is uh, again something which you have to decide in line with uh, your goals and objectives that you have uh, at one particular point in time. When you reduce the price, it uh, sends its ripple effects all along the, the chain of uh, the, the channel. The meaning that you have to revise the price for your distributors, for retailers, and uh, also for your and the customers. This is uh, a the comprehensive mechanism for which you have to seek support of uh, your colleagues from uh, accounting and finance, and uh, of course, uh, salespeople uh, whose support is a given, and uh, you just cannot move in the marketplace without the support of your salespeople and without their input. So you, in, you reduce the price uh, only because uh, you want uh, the potential customers to be attracted uh, towards your brand and then buy it. But the basic objective remains the same, that uh, you are out there trying to generate trial of the product in the hope that uh, the customers get hooked onto your brand. Another tool of communication which is gaining a lot of popularity nowadays is uh, coupons. You know the basically what coupons are, and uh, the coupons are uh, the distributed to potential customers, again in the hope that, uh, that they will exercise their option to use those coupons when they come to the retail outlets, uh, give those coupons and uh, they get something in return. The, the basic idea and objective uh, that remain the same, that uh, that you have to uh, generate trial uh, by offering something extra, whether it is uh, the price discount or something else, uh, that is uh, the part of the mechanism which defines that particular coupon. The challenge here is to uh, distribute those coupons and uh, to make sure that um, the, the use of coupons is uh, very much in line with the objectives. The meaning coupons should not be abused uh, because uh, if coupons are abused and uh, you do not end up um, generating the level of trial for which the coupons were designed, then the exercise becomes self-defeating. Distribution of coupons can take place through newspapers, which is the practice in the many markets of the world especially the, the developed world. You can also insert coupons inside of uh, the magazines and uh, you can also mail coupons to your uh, the potential customers. It all depends on the kind of product that you are selling and uh, the outreach that you have for that product. That those are the kind of uh, things of which distribution of uh, coupons should be a function of. If you're selling a product which is very exclusive um, and uh, you are selling that one just about uh, through 10% of uh, the total retail population of the market, it is uh, the one particular situation which is very different from the one in which you may have to distribute your product through thousands and thousands of retailers, which generally is the case with so many FMCGs. So depending on the nature of your product, the volumes that you are dealing in, and the goals and objectives that you have set yourselves, you are going to make your decision about the number of coupons and the distribution of coupons and so on and so forth. 
Another uh, the tool which again has uh, become uh, the very popular nowadays is rewards and uh, the gifts. Rewards and gifts are uh, offered by companies that uh, basically are into service selling. Take a good look at uh, the airlines and banks and uh, you will know what I'm talking about. Airlines can offer the reward points if you fly a certain number of hours or you fly a certain route and the more you fly, the more points you accumulate and more points you accumulate, the more entitled you are to number of points and the process goes on and on. The basic objective is not only to generate trial, it also is to keep you attracted toward that particular airline and to keep you a loyal customer because uh, the companies are very uh, much aware of the fact that keeping their customers loyal uh, toward the brand is uh, one of the major goals of uh, the brand management. Uh, we're going to talk about all this uh, while we discuss pricing, but uh, in the context of uh, the communications, I think it is important to know that uh, one of the objectives of communication is to create loyal customers. Rewards are also offered by different credit cards. The objective there is to uh, actuate you uh, into shopping the more and more uh, so that uh, you use that card more and more and in return you accumulate a certain number of points by a certain mechanism uh, as uh, put forth uh, by the credit card company, meaning the bank. And uh, the more you shop, the more points you accumulate and more points you accumulate, uh, the more gifts you receive. There's a whole long list of uh, the products which are offered to you as uh, the gifts against the level of uh, the accumulation which uh, you have to with yourself. So rewards and gifts are uh, amply uh, clarified by the examples that I've given in relation to the airlines and uh, the credit cards. You can uh, get into these kind of uh, uh, the practices uh, if you are uh, into services and if, if you think that uh, the rewards and gifts could apply equally well to the products that uh, you are selling, there is nothing stopping you from doing that. The last tool which uh, I would like to talk about uh, as uh, a very important tool of uh, communication is uh, sampling. Uh, the sampling is uh, the generally undertaken when you have introduced a new brand and again you are out of the market to make sure that uh, the more and more people try that product because uh, the trial is uh, a reflection of uh, the action which is uh, the, the last stage of uh, the customer's response and uh, you like to make sure that if customers are not going to get into that action stage uh, by themselves you have to trigger that action by offering something which may be free of cost, but at least the customer is going to test the product. And uh, once the product is tested, then the chances of uh, that customer um, becoming a loyal customer are strong. And if the customer does not try, because the customer you know, is hesitant, the customer lacks initiative to try new products. You have to take the process into your own hands and at a certain cost, you have to start distributing your product by way of sampling. It is said, mostly in, case, in, in, in cases of uh, the food items, what sampling does, no other tool of uh, communications does because uh, you really make uh, your customers uh, taste the product and uh, once you know, that taste profile is uh, approved by the customer, the end result is uh, pretty well can be guessed as much by you as by me. So sampling uh, takes on an added importance when it comes to those products which can be tested then and there. And uh, it has been seen that uh, when you have uh, put up those small stalls outside of uh, the retail outlets or uh, inside of uh, the big supermarkets, the way it is in uh, the developed markets, then uh, customers generally uh, buy that product 
immediately after the testing that. So by the same token, if you are dealing in the kinds of products which cannot be tested, but uh, they can be used immediately upon customer getting home, uh, they do not hesitate to get into sampling because uh, that is the one tool which is going to make sure that trial is going to take place. And as a result of that trial, the chances of that customer getting back to the outlet and buying your brand are bright. What is very important while you undertake uh, the different tools of uh, the promotions and create a mixed bag, you're taking into confidence and into coordination, very close coordination, people from other departments. The meaning, your colleagues who are working in areas which are across your functional boundaries, they've got to be taken into confidence because they also form the part of your overall team. There is just no way that the marketing people uh, the meaning marketing managers and brand managers uh, by just being uh, the very philosophical and creative uh, they can go ahead with uh, the exercise by not taking into confidence people from accounting and finance and people from sales and people from production and people from information systems, so to say. Because uh, the promotions uh, the do affect the complete line of uh, the supply chain, uh, the meaning not only uh, starting from the manufacturing process, uh, starting from the purchasing of raw materials and so on and so forth. If they just look at uh, the one example of uh, extra content uh, by 10 to 15 percent, it is going to change the package, it is uh, going to change uh, the, your the purchasing, and it is going to uh, change your uh, production process, and it is uh, going to create an impact in the marketplace about which your salespeople have got to be prepared and they cannot prepare themselves unless they know what is going on inside of uh, the brand management function. So you have to take them on board so that they can uh, inform your customers, meaning all the intermediaries, at the most opportune time about the campaign which is in the offing. And that is how the intermediaries also get themselves prepared for the campaign which you are wanting to kick off. So never forget to take into confidence those people. Accounting and finance people are very important because they are the ones who are going to look into the impact of the promotion in terms of the bottom line and the total cost which uh, the, the campaign is uh, going to incur. And um, they are the ones who are going to work out the, the modalities as to when you should be informing all the intermediaries and uh, the, what are going to be the, the mechanics of uh, the, the discounts and uh, the extra uh, the offerings in terms of contents and um, the, the new the pricing tactics and uh, the new the pricing strategy, if you are changing the strategy as a result of uh, your promotional campaign. So these are the kinds of uh, strategic elements and um, all uh, the workings within the various departments of the company that uh, you have to make sure uh, the work in coordination with each other. Let these accounting and finance people uh, tell you the mechanics so that those the mechanics are communicated by the salespeople at just about the right most time so that the campaign is a success. And that is what you as marketing people want. We have uh, talked about uh, the promotions just like uh, you know, the way we uh, talked about advertising. And uh, we know that we have to have uh, the mix of uh, promotional tools in order to have an effective campaign. Given that, let us take a look at uh, the effects which uh, all those um, campaigns and tools 
have upon uh, the health of the companies. Okay, because everything that we do has a cost. And uh, th that goes without saying that uh, th we do all those things in order to increase sales. And uh, th when we increase sales, the underlying objective is to improve our profitability and uh, offer uh, the value to customer so that uh, the customer uh, really stays loyal to our brands. And uh, the, given that, uh, we have to look into the impacts of uh, the promotional campaigns that uh, we have talked about. First of all, it is uh, generally argued that uh, the promotions increase sales, but they increase sales in the short run. According to one source, the elasticity of sales to promotions is much greater than it is for advertising. The elasticity of sales is the increase in sales which takes place in response to a promotional campaign. It is uh, much greater in case of uh, promotions, and it is also said it is greater by 20 times, the meaning the elasticity of sales is 20 times as much in response to promotions as it is to advertising. And we also know that uh, the advertising is very expensive uh, because we have to pay upfront for uh, going into papers, for going into television, uh, which is uh, the very expensive medium, and uh, the promotions are uh, things uh, which do not, on the face of it, um, at least look like incurring very high costs uh, because we're basically uh, dealing uh, with inducements and uh, we're offering those uh, inducements by way of offering either more product or free product. So companies uh, generally have uh, this uh, feeling uh, that um, the, the amount of money which already has gone into uh, the working capital uh, may not be uh, as uh, huge as uh, it otherwise would be if it um, gauged into advertising. And uh, that is the prime reason that companies like to get into the promotions. But then we are talking about the effect uh, which is generally uh, short-lived and uh, short-termed. Not Withstanding 20 times uh, as much as it is in case of advertising, it does not really last beyond a certain promotional cycle. And uh, the promotional cycle is defined by the time that your promotion keeps on taking place. If the promotion goes on, say, for uh, one month, that's the promotional cycle. And uh, beyond that cycle, uh, the sales have a tendency to go back down, and that is not a good effect. Another thing you know, that takes place is because of the inducements, the customers generally end up buying more. You do feel very happy and satisfied about that happening, but that is kind of a syndrome which the companies also like to avoid at the same time, because when customers get into buying uh, the extra uh, the during one promotional cycle, they are buying uh, for the next cycle, uh, which is without a promotion, naturally goes down, especially uh, if elasticity of demand is not that great. If it is uh, the food item, uh, which is uh, being consumed, then there is something else. They might you know, get back to uh, your uh, the food outlet or uh, the retail outlet, which is selling prepared food or whatever, but uh, if it is uh, the kind of an item uh, which uh, does not really have a, a great elasticity, then sales will really go down. And uh, that is what you may call the borrowed sales syndrome. Because in actuality, what you're doing is you are borrowing sales from um, a future period. And uh, you have created those sales during the present time at the cost of your uh, the future cycle, which is without any promotional support. Another uh, the argument which is uh, the given against promotions is uh, the meaning, another effect of uh, promotions is that uh, the promotions uh, the may be the unprofitable. Well, because of the fact that uh, the everything adds up in terms of costs, uh, the promotions uh, the also the carry a lot of cost. 
cost not only in terms of uh, the giving ex extra product, but cost also in terms of uh, disruption, you know, which is caused uh, during your uh, the production processes and uh, the distribution and sales and uh, logistics, the inventory management, the, your information systems, the, because uh, the, you're dealing with something which is out of the ordinary. The, you're not dealing with uh, the systems the, which are in place as a routine. The, you are dealing with something the, which is away from the routine and therefore it uh, requires more time and uh, it also is prone to the more mistakes which the people might make. It also is prone to the so many different complexities because you know there's a cutoff date when um, a normal uh, the buying cycle ends and uh, a promotional buying cycle uh, starts off. And by the same token, the promotional cycle ends off at a certain point. And uh, again, the normal uh, the buying cycle starts off. So that process uh, goes on in an iterative fashion. So whenever um, there's a break and there's a change, it, it is not free of complexity and uh, the people are prone to making mistakes. And those situations develop so many conflicts, inter-channel conflicts and uh, intra-company conflicts which uh, could surface among uh, the various departments. So this is another uh, the negative um, impact of uh, promotions. And uh, it also is said that uh, the during promotions, uh, the businesses uh, generally exchange profits with uh, the high volumes. In other words, marketing and sales departments uh, in particular are uh, oriented toward uh, the higher volumes of sales uh, which they register as a response to uh, the one particular promotional campaign not being mindful of the fact that uh, it costs money and it may cost money to the point that uh, it starts eating into your profits and uh, it may cost to the point the way it becomes kind of uh, an un unprofitable venture. And uh, when you run into that kind of an unprofitable situation, it is not a good situation as you will agree with me. So you must see to it that, uh, that there is a balance between uh, the promotions and uh, the, the profitability, which is the objective of the company. And uh, it is uh, because of this reason that uh, the marketing, marketing people uh, must see to it that um, the extra uh, the volumes that you are uh, the generating uh, must also uh, the offset the extra costs which you are incurring. And it is um, because of uh, the, that reason also that promotions should be short-lived. I'm not saying that uh, the promotions should be short-lived only owing to that particular reason that promotions are uh, very expensive. Promotions have got to be short-lived also from the standpoint that uh, if you prolong uh, your uh, the promotional campaign, then uh, the customers are going to get used to those and uh, your brand uh, is going to be known as the one which cannot uh, live on its own independently in the marketplace without those crutches. And uh, you've got to develop a reputation for your brand that uh, it is free of any props and free of any uh, artificial uh, kinds of uh, supports with which in the long run are uh, not going to be positive for uh, the brand. Instead of the fact that um, the brand should uh, the generate uh, the value and uh, thereby uh, the charge the premium, it gets into price cutting and uh, discount offers uh, the which uh, the devalue the brand. And uh, it is devalued only if um, the promotions uh, are prolonged. So that is why keeping uh, the duration of a promotion short is very important. Another thing which uh, we have to consider uh, while uh, coming up with uh, a promotional campaign uh, is again the response effects. We must know where the brand lies in terms of uh, customers' response effects and uh, accordingly we should uh, come up with a campaign that has uh, compatibility 
with uh, the the stage of the response effects in light of our objectives because uh, you may not uh, get into the sampling unnecessarily and uh, you may not get into extra product offering unnecessarily what it means is uh, that you have to be in a position to develop the rightmost relationship of uh, the promotional campaign just like you did in case of uh, the advertising with the phase of the customer response effects and uh, in most of the cases it is the generating trial and uh, the, when you are generating trial you've got to be very clear about to what extent you would like to go in uh, terms of uh, offering the product because it is all cost so that's what i was talking about it also takes place the meaning of promotional campaign alongside uh, an advertising campaign which has just kicked off in order to create uh, the awareness level because you're dealing with a new product so in that case the promotional campaign is not only generating trial it also is creating awareness because uh, when customers see that product for the first time with it being offered and the one of the ways i mean in one of the promotional ways first it uh, the creates awareness and at the same time it generates trial so uh, what happens is that uh, all the phases starting with awareness to comprehension to retention and then intention and action they all get compressed into the one phase which is the action and that's the beauty of uh, the promotions but i would again say you've got to be very clear about the objectives so that you do not end up uh, wasting your promotional money that's uh, my point and uh, you have to keep uh, your brand from getting devalued because uh, the one of the prime objectives of the brand is to create value for the company and to offer value to customer so a prolonged took the promotion which you may call kind of a mindless promotion may also the devalue the brand in the eyes of the customer who may start thinking that uh, the brand is not really worth the regular original price and that is why the company is offering so many inducements so be prepared to the maintain a balance when it comes to uh, creating and uh, the kicking off these campaigns another effect that uh, the promotions create is uh, that of uh, the imitation on part of your competitors the because promotions are not very difficult to follow competitors follow suit and uh, they also start offering uh, the kind of inducements which you offer to your customers and uh, a point comes when inducements the offering gets translated into the kind of a war and uh, everyone likes to excel uh, by offering more in order to win the war and uh, that is uh, where the, the price level really drops and the whole category suffers uh, the price wars are never good for uh, any brands and uh, it is therefore the duty of uh, the good brand managers uh, to see to it that uh, the promotions uh, are not created and executed in a way that uh, they attract uh, the competitors uh, in a way that um, it really escalates that cycle of uh, price cutting because um, the, the basic objective I would again say of uh, any brand is to uh, create value and uh, not to uh, get into price cuts there are uh, other effects also I mean it's not only that uh, the promotions create negative effects promotions uh, also create positive effects and uh, the one of the most important effects is that uh, the promotions create trial and uh, the achieving trial in itself is an achievement because uh, you have landed the product into the hands of uh, the final consumer and uh, if the product is good the consumer is uh, going to use your brand so it can be summarized in these words that uh, it all depends on the promise which your product carries and uh, if the promise is good if the positioning is uh, very sensible and uh, the promise is uh, delivered uh, very effectively then uh, the promotions are going to be of uh, tremendous help but if 
the promise is not uh, the really very good and uh, the positioning is not very effective, then um, promotions could, may not be as effective as they are in case of those brands could, which are very well positioned. So could, it is, uh, again, one of the responsibilities of uh, the brand managers to could, see to it that um, the, when brands are uh, subjected to uh, the promotions, they've got to be very clear about the, the goals and objectives relating those brands because uh, they are very clear about the picture, about the promise, the contract, the ability to deliver all that, and therefore they should know the kinds of promotions that would need to be carried out in relation to all that. The meaning brand managers could must never deceive themselves could by getting into unnecessary promotions could which end up consuming a lot of money and uh, not giving you the end result. And uh, I would say all over again that uh, you've got to make sure that all the expenditure uh, which you incur has got to at least be equal uh, to the extra sales uh, which you generate with the help of promotions. If the expenditure is on the lower side, nothing like it, but it has to be at least uh, equal to that. If expenditure exceeds and you do not get the desired result, then it is not a good situation. We can conclude by saying that uh, the effective promotions uh, drive traffic, increase uh, awareness, just like uh, the advertising does, and uh, increase trial and uh, the build the brand. We only have to be very careful about uh, the creating the, the right most promotions because the objective is to the gain customers and to, to retain those customers and uh, enhance the brand's image and uh, the not get into unnecessary uh, the price cuts. Uh, so much for uh, the promotions. And um, I would like to uh, give you a recap of uh, the, what I talked about uh, the promotions during this lecture. I told you that uh, the promotions uh, the work hand in hand uh, with advertising. And uh, the, when you are uh, the carrying out your advertising, it has to be complemented by a certain level of promotions. Because uh, the advertising the medium helps the brand to a certain level and that level generally is the level of awareness and comprehension. It also actuates consumers to go for the final action but it may not do that in all the cases. So in order to make sure that the action does take place in most of the cases we bring promotions into the game and we bring promotions into the game by supplementing and by complementing our advertising effort. We have uh, so many different tools at our disposal to uh, come up with um, the, the most practical, uh, the mixed bag of uh, promotions, uh, which is uh, not very expensive, and not very expensive in the sense uh, which does not really exceed, in terms of expenses, the extra volumes uh, which promotions are going to bring to the company. Generally, a debate goes on in almost all the companies that uh, even if we have spent a little more, it shouldn't really matter because it is going to build up uh, comprehension and uh, retention uh, in terms of brand uh, over a longer period and therefore it will uh, create the desired um, effect, meaning the action. But that is something in which the companies should avoid and uh, the balance has got to be maintained, I would continue in my next lecture with other tools of advertising which still remain to be discussed. So much for promotions and Allah Hafiz. I look forward to talking with you in the next lecture.